The following short film presentation is intended to introduce the TM truck range and to explain the numerous features which we're sure will make it a strong competitor in the UK and world market. If you recall, it was at the June 1970 truck conference that we made our first TM presentation. At that time, we'd used a cab frame supplied by an outside bodybuilder and one that is much in evidence on British roads today. It was a cab that provided the dimensions necessary for a Detroit diesel installation. We'd been afforded the opportunity to redesign much of the front face of the cab. It was, however, rejected by that conference because of the inherent obsolescence. The cabs that were held in higher regard at that time were the DAF 2000 and 2600, Mercedes, Volvo, Scania and Fiat. We began an intensive study of these European cabs to find out precisely what we had to match and improve upon in terms of cab layout and driver passenger comfort. These studies provided the comparative data used by the engineering, styling and manufacturing team in establishing the best package parameters. To cover the whole spectrum of cab usage, it was essential to develop a modular design that would provide two cabs of different overall widths. In achieving this, it's been necessary to create a style that's motivated by good proportion and the simplicity of form. The cab shown here has an overall cab width of 86 inches. This permits its use on Dutch B roads. Using common doors, side frames, balance panels, screen pillars and related structure, and by separating these units a further 12 inches, we derive a cab of maximum permitted overall width. The overall graphics of both cabs are sufficiently similar to ensure strong product identity, while at the same time providing design flexibility to suit their different specifications. The cab interiors also illustrate the design intent to commonize control units throughout the range, even when used in a walkthrough cab. The raised instrument console is identical for wide or narrow cabs and is symmetrically disposed for use on right or left-hand drive. A generous entry condition has resulted from placing the hinge pillar well forward and the driver is given an unimpeded climb into the cab. Instrumentation and controls have been arranged for the best driver orientation and developed into a design theme incorporating all safety and serviceability requirements. The two primary console instruments placed directly in front of the driver comprise a speedometer or tachograph and a combined instrument which includes composite fuel, temperature and air gauges. This instrument also houses the warning lights which are connected to the primary system showing brake, electrical or coolant failure. Provision has been made for optional gauges, a rev counter, accessory switches, battery condition indicator and a trailer air pressure gauge. The column canopy carries all primary switches, namely direction indicator, two-speed wiper, wash, horn and driving lights. 
It also includes the hazard switch and a combined ignition and steering lock. Dual heaters are fitted as standard and the controls are accessible to both driver and passenger. Location has been provided for a radio and this will be standard in some variants. The extensive air ducting assures a consistency of demist to the deep, almost flat windscreen. Much of the interior trim is primarily a vacuum formed ABS, creating smooth contoured, insulating surfaces and a high luxury appearance. The engine cover intrusion in these cabs presents a particular problem for the seating of a third occupant. A solution to this has been developed in the form of a folding seat, which would not occupy valuable space when not in use. All major manufacturers of large trucks provide sleeper versions of their vehicles. In most cases, this involves production of specially extended cabs with one or two bunks installed. It was proposed for this product to use a pod containing a single bunk attached to the back of the cab. This insert panel at the rear of the cab allows easy access through the rear of the driving compartment. This separate sleeper unit has several advantages, simplifying production and giving the occupant a pleasant, isolated environment. In view of the importance of driver comforts in this class of vehicle, great attention has been paid to seating design for the TN. The type shown provides a wider range of adjustments. Each of the four cushions is independently adjustable. Height, back rate and profile can be changed by the driver to achieve his ideal position for control and comfort. To return again to the exteriors of this cab range, the front surface of all cabs will be horizontally divided by a rigidly mounted cross member. This basic structural member affords considerable driver protection, a feature which has gained much favourable comment on our present KM cab. Both upper and lower panels are hinged for service access, and the lower one also facilitates cab tilt. The Bedford name badge, which like so many of the European truck manufacturers' name badges, creates the focal point of the front-end graphic theme, will be a reflective decal. Extremely durable and extensively used in the automotive world, the decal will be fitted at the plant and protected during transit by an adhesive mask. This mask can also be used by the operator when painting fleet cabs in company livery. There's also provision in the cab for the 6V71 and B-rated V871 engine installations. This version uses the major exterior panels of the cab, with an extended side valance panel to cover the wider track. It will, however, use the H-cab bumper with the dual 7-inch headlamp. By retaining the same valance panel and removing the steps, a forward wheel location to meet Australian axle loading regulations is possible. A further use of the small cab components will be made with the projected design of the panel van. This version will also be available as a chassis cowl or chassis cab variant. The rendering shows the modified front end using small bumpers, headlamps in the body panel and a new side valance to accommodate the use of smaller wheels and tyres. Gentlemen, that concludes the introduction, which we hope will have answered many of the questions that would doubtless have been posed when you review the cabs in the Styling Auditorium.